Well, you know what they say, heavy is the head that wears the crown, and for Tudor, sister company to Swiss powerhouse Rolex, that burden was a bit too much to bear, and the company is now just one whole big mess. But as a business consultant, and as a self-proclaimed watch snob, I'm gonna see if there are any steps we can take to save Tudor. Special thanks to channel member Adam H for asking me this during one of my live streams. We're gonna go ahead and try to save Tudor for you, buddy. It's 12 p.m. on the button. Let's get down to business. All right, Tudor. You know, Tudor's a company I take issue with, and it's not because their watches are poorly made per se, it's more so that they're just clearly a very lazy company, and what makes it worse is a lot of the people that defend Tudor are just clearly disillusioned. So I wanna make one thing very clear right off the bat, okay? Tudor is independent of Rolex. Tudor is not the poor man's Rolex. They're both owned by the Hans Wildorf Foundation, but there's nothing Rolex about a modern Tudor. No oyster case, no Rolex crown, and I'm, and I'm not talking about the Rolex crown logo. I'm saying literally it doesn't use an oyster case or any of Rolex crown technology. No Rolex movement or an Aigler movement for that matter. No Rolex bracelet or clasp. Again, there is nothing Rolex about modern Tudor and that's fine. But yeah, Tudor is not the poor man's Rolex. They're just, they're not similar at all. And I don't blame Tudor for that. I actually blame most of the Tudor fanboys and some of the consumers for kind of perpetuating that whole mess. Uh, let's just nip it in the bud and stop it now. So okay, knowing this, we can agree, Tudor operates separately from Rolex. But there is one thing I'll blame Tudor for, and it's the fact that they've essentially squandered this bout of independence by proving they can't bring anything interesting to the table, and perhaps their only point of value is the fact that they are related to Rolex somewhere down the line. You see, Tudor is either incapable or unwilling to produce anything innovative. And the few innovative watches they do have, they themselves do not care about. For instance, at the time of filming, uh, out of their last 15 posts on Instagram, only two are of watches that are not black bays. And then after that, as you keep scrolling, again, it just goes back to their normally scheduled programming, which is black bay, black bay, black bay, black bay, in just a few minute different variations. The Pelagos, a badass titanium diver, they don't care about. The North Flag, uh, probably one of my favorite tutors. The last time they showed a picture of that was in March and I'm filming this in July. But again, it's very clear what Tudor wants to sell you and it's just different iterations of the same watch, just Black Bay and a few different colorways and oh, okay, they have a chronograph version, cool. Oh, but what about the Tudor SKX? That was innovative, right? That was different, that was something new. Why are you complaining about it, time teller? Nope. Literally, that Tudor Black Bay P01 that everyone was freaking out about, oh my gosh, it's something different. Uh, well, it's a reissue of a Seiko homage. How does that feel? So okay, what can we do to save Tudor's reputation and maybe turn it into a company we can all be excited about and not just, you know, some Black Bay copy machine? Number one, they need to show interest in other products. And I'm not talking about the consumer. I'm not talking about us. I mean, Tudor needs to show interest in some of their own products outside of the Black Bay line. That's right, they need to prove to the consumer base that there are other viable options when it comes to other product lines. Because right now, the only thing they are excited about is the Black Bay. So why would the consumer want to be excited about anything else? Again, they need to show interest in other products. That's number one. Number two, they need to not solely rely on the consumer that simply wants a Black Bay because it's an affordable alternative to the Rolex Submariner. Because let's face it, there are other kinds of people out there, right? What about the people that travel a whole bunch, that spend a lot of time outdoors? They're, they're kind of explorers, right? Well, the Tudor North flag would be right up their alley, but no one knows about it because Tudor spends zero time marketing it. It is simply not a viable option to a prospective consumer base because again, Tudor does not show enough interest in that watch. Number three, they need to give the Tudor Pelagos a GMT complication. Now I know some of you are laughing, but hear me out. This makes total sense. 
If Tudor spent a little less time marketing the Black Bay and giving it, you know, a different dial color, a different bezel color, and they spent a little more time designing a movement that could give the Pelagos a GMT, I swear to God, that watch would sell like hotcakes and I would probably pre-order it. A titanium diver with a really good water resistance rating and a GMT complication? Come on, that would be the ultimate vacation watch. That would be a watch you could wear. It would be rough and tumble. You wouldn't have to baby it. And again, it would have such supreme functionality and it would be solid titanium no brainer for Tudor but they don't want to do the work to design that they just want to give the Tudor Black Bay a different color bezel number four and this is probably the most important point on this list Tudor needs to set up a competitive product catalog that can take on relevant watchmakers. Now here's where Tudor needs to be honest with themselves. Tudor is not competing with Rolex. Tudor is not the poor man's Rolex. Tudor needs to understand that and some of the Tudor fanboys need to understand that. And listen, I understand the common sentiment when it comes to sales. You need your business to be the easiest choice for the consumer. They need to know that you are the easiest choice for them, but I'm gonna kind of flip that. Tudor needs to make it a more difficult decision for the prospective buyer that might be looking at an Oris or a Zinn or even a Tag Heuer. Tudor needs to blur the lines a little bit, okay? Because right now, people only like Tudor and they're like, oh, well, okay, a Black Bay is more affordable than a Submariner and uh, hey, it's essentially a Rolex, right? So I'm just gonna buy the Tudor Black Bay. No, they need to be honest with themselves. Tudor, they need to say, hey, are you in the market for an Oris? Are you in the market for a Zinn? we got something you might be interested in. And when we look at the diverse product catalogs from people like Oris and Zinn, uh, and we look at those prices, kind of makes me wonder why Tudor doesn't jump into that market. Maybe Tudor should design a few non-Black Bay chronographs to compete with Zinn, or maybe a, a highly functional pilot series to compete with Oris. Or maybe even a truly complicated dress watch line, again, to compete with Oris Artillier. Guys, listen, the prices are there. It's pretty congruent. Tudor's just lazy. Tudor needs to stop acting like they're blurring the lines for the prospective Rolex or Omega buyer. Those dudes are gonna be buying those watches. But again, Tudor, start diversifying your reach. You'll probably become a more interesting company for a larger group of people. You'll probably sell more watches. And heck, I might even be interested in buying one. But alas, I doubt Tudor will do that because that's gonna take a good bit of work to start diversifying your catalog, designing some new watches, and that's not something Tudor wants to do, so I expect a new Tudor Black Bay color to come out in six months. And there you have it, guys. These are the steps Tudor can take to fix their brand. Tudor, if you're watching this, uh, I'll send you an invoice. But guys, let me know what you think. What can Tudor do to fix their brand and make it more appealing and make themselves more interesting of a company? Again, we don't wanna see Black Bay after Black Bay after Black Bay. Uh, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see your perspective and how you think about all of this. And again, special thanks to my channel member, Adam H, for giving me this idea for this episode. I get a lot of my content ideas from my channel members. So if you wanna join the channel, again, we don't use Patreon. The vast majority of our support comes from channel memberships, $4.99 a month. You get access to the members only Discord chat. Uh, we talk about watches, obviously we talk about weightlifting, cars, food, photography, even the stock market and video games. Just a very diverse group of people over there. And again, they're watch enthusiasts and uh, a lot of them like Tudor, some of them even own Invicta. So we don't all agree all the time, but we all come together uh, because of our love for watches. So I'd love to see you there, guys. If you wanna join, click the join button next to the subscribe button. And again, I would be honored to see you in the Discord chat. And guys, check out all the affiliate links in the description below. We got watch winders, watch toolkits, modern watches, everything the watch collector needs at my Amazon store. And if you wanna check out some really cool vintage stuff, check out the number one place to buy affordable vintage luxury watches, www www.thetimetellershop.com. That's my personal website. Everything there is handpicked by me, serviced with a one-year warranty. So guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller, and always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah,